Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India NPTEL course Environmental Chemistry and Microbiology. This course will be taught by Professor Sudha Gwell and myself, Professor Anjali Pal. We are from Civil Engineering Department, IIT Kharagpur. We have divided this course into two parts. The first part, Environmental Chemistry, will be covered by me. And the second part, environmental microbiology, will be taught by Professor Shudha Gwell. This is my module 6 and lecture number 26. In my previous modules, I have covered the acids, bases, and salts in the first module. In the second module, I have discussed about the chemical equilibrium. In the third module, I discussed about the chemical kinetics. In the fourth module, I covered the catalysts. In the fifth module, I discussed about the chlorine chemistry and nitrogen chemistry. And this is my sixth module and lecture number 26, where I will teach about the radioactivity or nuclear chemistry. This is part A. This, uh, this chapter actually radioactivity or nuclear chemistry is very interesting chapter and you know for this type of um, means development there are many Nobel prize you will see that um, atomic structure and radioactivity they got many Nobel prize and uh, very interesting you will find find this topic very very interesting at least for me it is very very interesting topic now the lecture content you know the lecture uh, in this lecture i will discuss about the basic thing about the radioactivity then i will tell the history that means how the radioactivity is discovered then difference between the chemical reaction and nuclear reaction because, because this chapter is for nuclear reaction. I already discussed many things about chemical reaction, but now I am coming to nuclear reaction. So, I will tell you what is the difference between these two. Then stability of nucleus, what makes a nuclear very stable or unstable and then properties of alpha, beta and gamma rays I will discuss. Now, what is radioactivity? It, you know that some uh, nuclei uh, undergo very spontaneous uh, disintegration okay? and disintegration is accompanied by emission of particles say particles or rays say for example, alpha particle, beta particle you will see I, when I will discuss in details about the properties of these uh, particles. Now, who will be unstable, which type of nuclei will be unstable. Uh, that depends on the atomic number you know and the neutron proton ratio. Now, mostly we have seen that heavy uh, that uh, atomic number greater than 83 makes a t makes a nuclei very unstable and they become radioactive. Some of these elements they occur in nature and some of them can be uh, formed artificially by man by um, that means they are man made. Now, the nuclei of this uh, radioactive elements are unstable uh, radioactivity means the they always uh, give up or they always radiate some uh, particles or uh, some rays 
that means they are unstable. Now, this means that they cannot remain as they are means so how they are they cannot stay like that they always give up some uh, give up some uh, particles or rays and in doing so they are converted into another atom. And finally, at the end although it may take long time, but at the end they are transformed into some isotope of lead. This type of decay, this type of disintegration is called radioactivity okay, and they are called radioactive disintegration. Now, uh, discovery, discovery of radioactivity, you all have heard the name Henry Becquerel, French, sci French scientist in 1896, you can see that uh, he discovered this radioactivity and how you know that uh, in their family uh, in his father and his grandfather they are all scientists it is a scientist family and uh, what they uh, they used to do they used to take some actually uranium sulfate it is a uranium compound uh, it has some fluorescence but to show the fluorescence you know it has to be exposed first with some light sunlight say for example so what they used to do they used to um, uh, irradiate it with the it was kept in a bottle the compound was kept in a bottle it is an uranium uranium compound and uh, then they exposed it with sunlight and they uh, used to show the fluorescence to the village people this uh, they used to do and also becquerel you know um, one year back the x rays were discovered and then he used to do some experiment um, with this type of compound fluorescent compound and he used to see whether x rays are coming out or not so what happened um, there are uh, few days there was no sun and uh, it could not be exposed with the light and it was kept on a uh, on a table top and uh, in the drawer uh, which is uh, below means uh, below the table top and there was some uh, photographic plates kept ok. So, there are some photographic plates and uh, new photographic plates, but these new photographic plates were wrapped in uh, black paper ok. So, that why they have kept because um, because so, uh, if it is exposed to any type of light then uh, they it cannot be used anymore that is why it is kept in a uh, wrapped in a black in a piece of black paper. And uh, uh, so it was in the drawer, and on the top of the table, uh, he kept that bottle. Okay, uh, so the uh, so and there was no sun, uh, sun for the few days, uh, for the last few days, so it could not be exposed. And then what happened? Um, when uh, he has seen that the the photographic plate, when he took out the photographic plate. Um, he he observed that it is already exposed. So, but he was surprised to see that. Why? Because the uh, the uh, the bottle in which the um, the uranyl sulfate potassium uranyl sulfate was kept that was on the table top, and the photographic plate was inside the drawer that too wrapped with a black paper. Then how come some light can come inside? and how can uh, it can expose the photographic plate. So, he was very surprised and then uh, what he he did he again uh, did the same experiment and he uh, he wrapped the photographic plates with even with aluminum and copper sheets, but then also it was exposed. Then uh, some some idea came to his mind that must it must be some some type of light or some type of rays that is coming from the uranyl sulfate, okay, and that is exposing the photographic plate. He did not he repeated the experiment many times, but then uh, he could not understand why it is happening. That time radioactivity was not known, so he could not understand why it is happening. Now. Uh, then uh, the similar experiment then he uh, published it in some uh, some somewhere and then uh, the, ma, the another scientist you all heard the name that ma, madam curie 
she what she was doing she was just about to start her uh, research and he was trying to find out some good topic for her research then that uh, article uh, um, she has noticed that article and then he was he was thinking to start his research in a very new and very challenging topic so when he saw this thing then uh, uh, he was very much interested to uh, to do research in that area then this this practical problem was taken up by madam curie and uh, you know in france and then uh, uh, her husband pierre curie so uh, so this uh, this topic this research field was continued by them the, and lot of research was uh, was done by uh, madam curie and pierre curie and then it was realized that it is uh, not the property of uh, not the property of potassium uranyl sulfate but it is the property of uranium itself that means uh, any compound uh, which contains uranium may show this type of effect and he did with uh, they did with the uh, pitch blend some uranium ore and then um, then uh, the phenomena why it is happening was to some extent realized that it is some uh, atomic phenomena and uh, some atoms are uh, radiating something um, which is spontaneous means uh, nothing can affect this uh, this um, property uh, inhibit this property okay um, and then another thing they realized that it is the property of uranium itself then uh, they were trying to find out uh, means extract uh, some amount of uranium from the pitch blend that is the ore Mm, and uh, tons and tons of uh, uranium they were using to to isolate little amount of uranium but uh, what they realized that uh, pitch blend uh, it is showing much more radioactivity than the uranium itself so uh, what is the cause for this then they found uh, two more elements from there what is that that is the polonium and radium so why the name polonium came because madam curie was from poland so on her um, means motherland uh, on the name of her motherland the new uh, new element which is also very 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 radioactive element um, uh, and another element radium uh, these two elements uh, uh, were isolated and uh, the name of polonium uh, is given by Mm, by the uh, by madam curie according to her motherland and the term radioactivity was also coined by madam curie okay so she first gave the name that it is radioactivity why radioactivity because radiations are coming coming out from those elements that is why radioactivity uh, and uh, as i said that this property is independent of any external condition if you increase the temperature if you increase the uh, the pressure or if you give some light it does not matter means uh, it is automatic coming automatically coming out spontaneous spontaneously for this type of phenomena um, uh, means um, first time observed by becquerel and um, uh, madam curie and pierre curie uh, the nobel prize in physics was given in 1903 to uh, becquerel uh, mary curie and pierre curie for the discovery of radioactivity and uh, you can see that second nobel prize um, on this particular topic um, was given second time madam curie got uh, the um, nobel prize in chemistry in 1911 why to uh, for the discovery of radium and polonium okay so two, two times he she got the nobel prize uh, two times once uh, jointly and another single now this is the history of discovery and then uh, why some uh, some nucleus is unstable why some nucleus are stable and some nucleus are unstable this is this was explained by proton neutron concept what is this the number of protons and neutrons in the nuclei of the atoms of low atomic weight 
means uh, when the atomic weight is um, um, less uh, then the neutron and proton the numbers of protons and neutrons are um, are almost equal uh, okay almost equal but the relative number of neutrons becomes increasingly greater for elements of higher atomic weight and for example uh, the uh, C is 12 ok. So, uh, carbon, carbon is an example and uh, the 12 is the um, atomic uh, mass and uh, 6 is the atomic number. You all know that what is atomic mass and what is the atomic number. Uh, then uh, 6, pro so why it is 12 the atomic mass because it contains 6 protons and 6 neutrons ok. So, uh, the proton neutron if you see that the ratio n is to p is 1 ok. So, it is a very stable uh, nucleus carbon, carbon 12 is very stable nucleus, but if you see the uh, uranium uh, 238 this is the uh, atomic mass number 238 then it contains 92 protons and 146 uh, neutrons that means, a uh, neutron is to proton the ratio is much much greater than 1. This makes the uranium nucleus unstable that means, neutron proton ratio uh, when it is 1 uh, or close to 1 it is stable, but as it goes on increasing then it becomes uh, gradually um, unstable. Okay. Um, you know the um, nuclear structure, okay, uh, you know the atomic structure ok. According to Bohr model we all know that uh, in uh, in a atom in an atom the nucleus is at the center occupying a very small space and uh, rest part which is uh, uh, much much greater than the nucleus that space and the electrons are orbiting. Okay. In the nucleus there is proton, there are protons and there are neutrons okay. and um, each proton has uh, unit uh, charge and unit, unit positive charge and uh, unit mass, one unit mass and neutron has no charge, but it has unit mass. So, that we all know from our school days uh, and electrons uh, has no mass, but electrons has unit negative charge. Okay. So, um, uh, how will you write the um, any element when I want to show the uh, atomic mass uh, and atomic number, atomic number is the number of protons, how I can write, I can write both in this side also. In many books you will see that um, in the top part the atomic mass is written and then in the bottom part atomic number is written. So, 12 and 6 in this case both are written in this side one in the top another is the bottom, but in some books you will see that it is it is written in this fashion also. Same is for uranium 238 it is the atomic mass and then atomic number ok. Atomic number usually is represented by z and atomic mass uh, mass number is usually uh, represented by a now then a minus z is the number of neutron okay because uh, the mass is coming from the proton and uh, neutron uh, each of having uh, unit mass now uh, what is happening how why the nuclear you know in the you can think that in the nucleus there are many protons which are of uh, unit positive charges now I told. So, uh, they should repel each other there must be some repulsive force acting and so how uh, they should uh, that means the nucleus should be broken ok, uh, but why what makes them stable actually the uh, it is the short range force, short range force means it is within the nucleons there is some force and that force is much higher and uh, it is um, overcoming the repulsive force ok. And the relation between the neutron and proton you can see that neutron if it takes up one positron what is positron it, positron it is the positive electron. 
So, that can give you, you have seen this type of this in chemical uh, equilibrium also. So, these are dynamic equilibrium. So, a neutron after taking one positron can form proton and again proton after taking electron it can form neutron and this, this is another type they have shown that neutron may give uh, the proton with the electron and neutrino. Okay. Similarly, proton can give one neutron and then uh, po positron and then new anti neutrino. Okay. This type of e equilibrium may exist um, and making them stable. Another theory is uh, given by Yuka that is the Mason theory in 1935 pi is the Mason you know. So, proton can, um, can give neutron and positive Mason. Similarly, neutron can give negative Mason and um, proton. So, this type of um, concepts are there to make the um, um, nucleus stable. Now, uh, as is shown in the figure, you can see that here in the x axis it is the number of protons p and here number of neutrons. Up to 20 you can see that number of protons and number of neutrons are same. And then as you go on increasing the number of protons, you can see this is the line for 1 is to 1 neutron proton plot. Okay. Now, as you go on increasing the number of protons, you can see the it is the line that it is deviating from this line. Okay. And actually after 83, um, 83 uh, Z uh, 83, you can, uh, the all the nuclei are very unstable. Okay. And um, you can see that 83 after uh, with z up to 83 they are more or less stable, but beyond this point the n by t ratio increases more and more leading to nuclear instability. All elements having z above 83 are unstable and shows radioactivity. So, this is the thing here 83 is almost here. So, you can see it is much deviated from this line and they are um, radioactive. Okay. Now, uh, the properties uh, uh, you can see the particles that is coming out that are coming out from a radio from a radioactive element. Okay. What is this? This is the figure you know this is a lead block uh, block made of lead okay. and then here there is a small hole okay. and here some radioactive element is kept. So, and then the some uh, radiations are coming out, some particles are coming out from as I explained uh, in the previous slide that radioactive elements they can uh, they are uh, disintegrated with the uh, emanation uh, of the uh, some uh, particles. Okay. And then when uh, some magnetic field or electric field is kept, magnetic field in the uh, this if this is the paper plane of the paper, it is the perpendicular to the plane of the paper, then you can see that the it is um, this uh, pa these particles are deviated from its path, uh, it is deflected actually deflected. So, what you see these are the alpha particles and these are the beta particles and this is a gamma particle, gamma particle is not gamma rays it is all uh, uh, called gamma rays, it is not deflected. Okay, it uh, just goes away like this, but alpha particles are deflected towards the negative um, end uh, uh, and then uh, and the beta particles are uh, deflected towards the positive um, end. Okay. Uh, now, you can see here that alpha particles are deflected less compared to the beta particles, because what is alpha particles we will see that they are um, they are having more mass uh, compared to uh, beta okay, um, mass and uh, charge. What is uh, alpha particles I will tell. So, alpha particles are, are identical with helium nuclei, okay. Hel they are the helium nuclei. What is there in the helium nuclei? N helium nuclei uh, uh, I can write helium uh, 4 and 2. Okay. So, atomic mass uh, is 4 and atomic uh, number is 2. So, uh, so, so, there are in the nucleus there are 2 electron uh, 2 neutrons and 2 protons okay. and uh, there are 2 electrons. So, it is the nuclei of helium uh, atom okay. 
and uh, uh, what is beta particle? Beta particle is nothing but the electrons. Okay. So, uh, there are different properties they, uh, they can show. Uh, what are the different proper properties? You can see that uh, the penetrating power of the alpha particles uh, are weak. Uh, uh, how much is that? 0.01 millimeter of aluminum foil. So, you can stop it, uh, you can stop the um, alpha particles by using this aluminum foil having the thickness 0 0.01 millimeter. Okay. And ionizing power is very high, uh, ionizing power is very high. Uh, and uh, the track, how it goes? It goes by straight tracks, straight uh, uh, line it goes. And speed, speed is um, as it is shown here, it is almost one tenth of the uh, speed of light. Okay. But beta particles, they are very similar to electrons and penetrating power is much higher than the uh, alpha particle. It is 0 0.1 millimeter of aluminum foil. You can see in some books it is written 5 millimeter also. So, it varies from book to book and also um, uh, the material also somewhere you it is written aluminum, somewhere it is written something else also. Now, ionizing power much weaker than the alpha rays. Okay. Cloud chamber track, you can see the track in there are many instruments by which you can see how the how is that track. Okay. So, in the cloud chamber, this is uh, one method is cloud chamber, you can see that they are showing not the straight tracks, they show thin irregular tracks, the beta particles and speed, speed you can see it is uh, approaching towards the uh, velocity of uh, light, but it is not uh, not the same. Uh, but it is much higher than this one. Now, what is gamma particles? Gamma rays or gamma particles? These are short electromagnetic waves, and the penetrating power is very high. Eight centimeter of lead. It can pass through um, thick sheet of lead. Uh, eight millimeter, eight centimeter of lead. Uh, it can um, pass through. Ionizing power. Ionize air. Cloud chamber. Short crook tracks. Okay. And then speed, speed you see that light. So, these are the properties of the alpha particles, uh, beta particles and gamma particles. The radiations from, uh, from, an elect, uh, from a radioactive element, okay. who has observed many of the properties they are uh, studied by Becquerel, Rutherford and Villard. And Rutherford got the Nobel prize for such type of studies the properties of um, properties of the rays that is coming out or particles that is coming out from the radioactive element. So, um, uh, 1908 uh, Nobel prize was given to Rutherford. Now, you can ask me that the uh, as you see that radioactive um, elements they um, produce beta particles. So, where from beta particles are coming? Is it uh, the orbital electrons that it is uh, uh, giving off this uh, this beta particles because beta particles are nothing but electrons? Uh, actually, not. It is not the orbital electron. It is coming out from the nucleus due to some conversion, isn't it? So, um, so it is it is, uh, con it is fallacy. Okay, many many. Um, Mm, school level questions, uh, it is uh, given that uh, where, what is the source of these beta particles, where from it is coming. Now, uh, nuclear reactions versus chemical reaction, you have already learnt uh, chemical reactions, many things about the chemical reactions um, and here now you are, uh, you are uh, studying the nuclear reaction. So, what is the difference? You know nuclear reactions are irreversible reactions, once it is uh, means alpha particles is emanated it cannot uh, it is coming out it cannot go back, but in chemical reactions we have seen say for example, nitrogen and hydrogen is uh, are reacting to form the ammonia. So, ammonia is also going to be converted uh, to nitrogen and hydrogen that you have seen. So, it is when it is means equilibrium. And the both processes are taking place, but uh, here it is not uh, like that. Okay, but new elements and new elements are formed in a nuclear reaction. 
when something is coming out like alpha rays, beta rays, then uh, one at uh, one um, the nucleus of one element is converted to the nucleus of another element. That means the um, the atomic number is changing. Okay, so it is um, nucleus is changing. Okay. So, element is changing, okay. but in case of uh, in case of uh, uh, that uh, chemical reaction you know nitrogen say for example, in ammonia synthesis nitrogen is remaining the same, hydrogen is remaining the same only it is combining with one another to form another compound. So, this is the difference. Now, radioactivity is an atomic property as just now I told during the discovery the um, that um, Madame Curie the, he, she observed that it may be some uranium any uranium compound that uh, will show the radioactivity. It may be uh, pitch blend, it may be uranyl sulphate, potassium uranyl sulphate, it may be some other compounds also. Okay. So, it is the atomic property, but in case of that means, it is the characteristic of an atom in which the change is occurring, but in uh, case of chemical reaction. Mm, uh, it is the it is not the atomic property nitrogen is staying the same uh, hydrogen is staying the same only thing they are combining with one another okay now a nuclear reaction occurs spontaneously spontaneously no external factor such as pressure temperature catalyst light has any influence on it okay uh, on the radioactive disintegration but uh, we have seen in the chemical reaction you know depending on the uh, pressure temperature we can uh, we can uh, means uh, change the uh, speed okay of the reaction okay here it is not possible okay it is automatic it is spontaneous and then energy change energy change that is involved in nuclear reaction is much much higher compared to the Mm, chemical uh, uh, chemical reaction okay and it is maybe 10000 times um, higher um, um, compared to the or even more uh, compared to the um, chemical change or chemical reaction so these are the differences uh, between the nuclear reaction and the uh, chemical reaction now, uh, to, to understand this radioactivity ch chapter, radioactivity uh, topic, we must know um, uh, a few things. Say, for example, isotope. What is an isotope? Um, atoms of given element having the same atomic number, um, but different atomic mass are called isotopes. Okay? Uh, and nuclei of such atoms contain the same number of protons, but different number of neutrons. It is obvious because if if the proton number is same, but atomic number is um, that means atomic number is same, but um, atomic uh, mass are different, then uh, the difference is nothing but the number of neutrons. Okay, so uh, neutron number of neutron must be change must um, must differ. And uh, the examples of this type of isotopes, the base, no, the, the base most simple is the hydrogen. You know, hydrogen, you know that um, it has the atomic number 1. Okay. So, uh, whatever isotopes of hydrogen may be, it should have the same atomic number. Uh, so, hydrogen, deuterium, and tritium, you see the proton number is same 1, 1, 1 but the um, proton number means atomic number is same, but the atomic mass that is uh, different. Okay. So, here in hydrogen it is 1, in deuterium it is 2, in tritium it is 3. Okay. So, they are the isotopes. Now, isotopes of magnesium you see here the atomic number uh, all are same, So, but the atomic mass is changing, atomic mass changing means the number of neutron is changing. So, here 22, here 25, here 26 that is the atomic mass. So, these are called atomic um, means these are called isotopes. Okay. Now, isobars nuclei having same mass number, mass number is same, but different proton number are called isobars. They have different chemical properties these isotopes have similar properties because property is decided by the atomic number. Okay. So, these are having the only um, thing is the mass okay, changing and um, here isobars you see the mass number is same, but atomic number that is the proton number is changing. 
okay that means the they are different elements atomic uh, number changing means they are different elements okay so for example here barium and lanthanum you see here the uh, mass number is the same 138 but here the atomic number is changing 56 and 57 so they are different elements obviously okay and isotones isotones are nuclei with same number of neutrons but different mass number are called isotones so they have the same number of neutrons okay ne same number of neutrons that means difference between the uh, atomic ma uh, atomic mass and atomic number in this case it is si silicon phosphorus and sulfur here if you see the difference 30 minus 14 31 minus 15 and 32 minus 16 so they are same okay so 30 minus 14 is same as 31 minus 15 is same as 32 minus 16 so the difference is nothing but the number of neutrons so they are having same number of neutrons but different mass numbers and obviously these elements are different okay okay so now what do you what do you mean by nuclide nuclide in an atom you may in the book so when you go through this chapter you will see they are writing nuclides okay so what is nuclide in an atom the number z is the atomic charge or atomic number and n is the number of neutrons that i just told uh, and a is z plus n okay a is the ma uh, atomic mass number okay so the parameters a and z completely define a particular atomic species okay uh, so, if you tell about a tell uh, for a particular um, element what is how much is a and how much is z then you already define a part, uh, atomic some uh, atomic species and this is the nuclide ok. What is radioisotope An isotope which shows that radioactivity is called radioisotope. So, isotope may be may, may be not radi uh, radioactive that is possible, but radioisotope means they are isotopes, but they are radioactive ok. So, for this uh, for this um, um, topic um, everywhere uh, in under module 6 the you see the same uh, references I have mentioned the all three are very good books although they are much uh, el elaborative uh, in this uh, time period uh, everything cannot be discussed but uh, most important points i will discuss but in in this books it is uh, described in much elaborative way many things um, are uh, there uh, very elaborately and uh, if you want to study this very interesting topic so if you want to uh, read um, more you you sh may consult these three books each one is very good. Now, as a conclusion I, ca I can tell that in this lecture uh, I have uh, told about the discovery of radioactivity, properties of radiation that is coming out from the radioactive substances and why some nucleus uh, is unstable uh, those things are explained and what is the difference between a chemical reaction and a nuclear reaction is elaborated. Thank you, uh, thank you so much.